Good morning. It is Monday, the sixth day of Adar Rishon, the first Adar. Uh, we, I'm talking here from the airport in Frankfurt, Germany, in a place where long ago, not long ago, Jews were not able to live, let alone to study Teira. And here we're sitting in this airport and studying the Teira. It is interesting, we, yesterday, the Yom Yom, we learned something very apropos. I'm going to read, read it inside. Interesting, Yom Yom, what the Rebbe said. Look what it says over here. There is, no, there is not the vaguest shadow of doubt that wherever our feet tread, it is all in order to cleanse and purify the world with words of Teira and Tefillah, prayer. We are all, we, all of Israel, are emissaries of God. Each of us, as divine providence has decreed for us, none of us is free from the sacred task placed on our shoulders. So wherever we are, right here in Germany, this is our mission to cleanse the world with words of Teir and Tefillah. So we're going to give our daily Tanya share right here in Frankfurt, Germany. And um, we are actually on our way to Australia, business Hashem, to visit children, the grandchildren. And um, so we yet learned yesterday about the, the two delicacies, the two kinds of delicacies, the two kinds of pleasures that God has that we can give God. is one of the tzaddikim, those who completely, completely transform the world into holiness. They have no evil inclination at all. And those of the Benanim, those who have an evil inclination that try to drag them down. And yet, this is the difference between the sweet delicacy and the spicy delicacy. The sweet delicacy is the one of the tzaddik. Everything is sweet, everything is nice. The spicy delicacy is when you take something bitter and you spice it up and you marinate it and you bring and you bring the good out of it so when a person goes it has a challenge he has a desire that the yetzahara drags him to do something to think something wrong to look at something wrong to speak something wrong and you overcome this yetzahara and every time you do this you create a tremendous pleasure by Hashem and a tremendous godly light that's elevated and also brings upon your neshama as well. And today's short Tanya Shir, the Alter Rebbe continues and it says, not only does it apply when you have uh, challenges of violating uh, sins and doing something against the will of Hashem and you overcome but even when you have the when you do your daily regular routine things kosher permissible things even when you do kosher permissible things you have also ability to do it in a way that brings a great joy and great light to Hashem how and that is, as we learned earlier in the Tanya, that everything in this world is no gray area. Everything either belongs to the side of the evil or the side of the Kedusha. That means even kosher things, if you eat something kosher, if you eat it for your own selfish indulgence, then you drag it down to the, to the other side. And if you eat it in a, in a proper way, if you eat it with a purpose of doing serving Hashem, then you're elevating it to the right place, you're elevating it to Hashem. So the, so the Rebbe says here 
that this is something that we can also practice, even a person that doesn't have bad thoughts. Even when you're talking about the daily routine things, you can practice of sacrificing your desire that rather than doing something for your own selfish reasons, you're doing it for Hashem. So let's see inside how the Alta Rebbe explains this. Furthermore, not only by fighting his evil thoughts does one subdue the sitra achra, but even in matters that are fully permissible. Does every act sacrificing one's impulse, even if only for a short while, meaning you delay partaking of even the permissible and essential, with the intention of subduing the sitra acha, which is in the left part of his heart. Also, this achieves this end of bringing this great light to Hashem when you sacrifice your other side. Kegoin, for example, shechofetz lechon. For example, when you want to eat something. When you want to eat, but you delay the meal for an hour or less. But what do you do in the meantime? You don't go read the newspaper. And during that time, he studies Torah. So if you delay something that you want to do, and you study Torah instead, and it's not that you're going to study more Torah, more or you're going to study less Torah if you don't do that. Even if you do, if you do it the same amount of time, but you, you just practice of delaying something which is your own pleasurable thing. You delay it a little bit, and you study Torah at the same time. And, and the Alter Rebbe brings an example that this is what the Gemara says. That's what, in fact, the Talmidi Chachomim, the scholars, the sages, they used to do that. It says, Gemara, as it says in the Gemara, Shor Revis Michael Kol Adam, Shor Shishis Michael Talmidi Chachomim. The Gemara says that the fourth hour of the day is when all men eat, and the sixth hour of the day is the meal time, the meal time for the scholars. Because they would go hungry for two hours with this intention. Obviously, we're not talking about the situation when the health is, 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 is involved. If the doctor says, uh, in general, today we should have uh, proper meals, but you can always find things that you can delay. You want to have a nice conversation, talk about the, uh, certain things, yeah, even if it's an uh, absolutely permissible thing, you delay it a little bit. It says, ah, although even after the meal, they would study all day. But they would study all day anyway. It's not that they would take, uh, they would study more by sacrificing this time. But if they wanted to sacrifice just to sacrifice, subdue their selfish desires to delay it, they accomplish this victory and this great light that came comes from uh, that they, the light of Hashem that is enhanced, as, we, as we'll soon see. Okay, in another example brings out the Rebbe. Similarly, if one restrains his mouth from saying things which, is, which he greatly desires to say concerning mundane matters. So even when there is nothing wrong with the words per se, yet he refrains from speaking them precisely because 
He feels a desire to do so. So you feel a desire to talk. That itself, when you hold on your desire, that itself is, a, is, is already a sacrifice. Likewise, regarding the thoughts of his mind, he suppresses an urge to think about some mundane matter. I want to think about something. And I change this. And I do instead. I think positive, good Torah thoughts. And even if later I'm going to think about this, what I wanted, what I wanted to think about. Even by the slightest subjugation, the Iskafia Sitra Achre Lesata, the Sitra Achre, the subjugation of the Sitra Achre right here below, even if it's in the slightest level, the Stalak, Yekor, the Kutcha, Brichu, Gdushosa, Le Eilo Arbe, the glory of God and His holiness is greatly elevated on high. This is the end of today's shir, telling us how important it is and how easy it is to achieve the greatest, to bring the, this great light. How easy, and this is something you can do every single day, every single moment. You want to do something, you want to think of something, you want to talk about something. It's not, we're not telling you not to talk. If it's a permissible thing, you can talk. But you know what, hold on a little, a little bit. Have this practice of subjugating your desire and do po something positive in this moment. S say some words of Torah, think some words of Torah, think of helping someone, do something to help someone. This is, says the Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, this is, brings a tremendous light of above, in a Hashem, and tomorrow we're going to continue, Mirza Hashem. And that's probably going to be from Melbourne, Australia. So we'll see you tomorrow. All the best.